So far, we have seen different algorithms for red mapping. The next question that we are going to ask is whether we can model a particular DNA sequence, and we don't know anything about DNA to predict what it is, and what is its function base on certain aspects in certain models. For example, if we have a new sequence of DNA, what can we do to find out for information about the sequence? One option is to align it so that we can do a database search and infer what have already been known about the similar sequence. Another option is to visualize it so we can inspect the content of the DNA whether it has a nucleotide composition that is very different from what we are supposed to see. Does it have certain KMERs which are existing in higher frequencies than the others? Is there any recurrent pattern that we observed in the DNA and so on? The third option is to model the particular sequence. Modeling refer to the situation where we can make some hypothesis about the sequence. For example, are there any common ancestor for the sequence? Are there any particular functionality associated with certain regions of the sequence, and so on? By modeling, we are trying to build a generative model, which is a mathematical model, that will allow us to predict different functionalities of this DNA. Given a long sequence of DNA, different regions of the DNA play a different function. For example, some part of the DNA can be an exon, intron, promoter region, CPG island, and etc. By building a generative model, we will be able to identify and annotate these regions given a new piece of unlabeled DNA. Of note, the generative model must be able to infer the functionality of non-identical sequences and recognize the pattern of known sequence. Once the model is developed, we can classify the non-annotated sequences based on the annotated regions. These generative models are often generated by probabilistic modeling. Why is it useful to have a probabilistic model for the biological sequences? First of all, biological data is oftentimes noisy. Data collected from different sources may give rise to various variations due to biologically variability. The probabilistic modeling techniques can be very useful in updating our previous knowledge that we already have about the biological sequences. When we are using probabilistic sequence modeling, we are not limited to yes or no kind of answers. Instead, it generates answer together with the level of confidence. One of the probabilistic sequence modeling that is commonly used is called the Markov models. There are classic Markov chains and there is also extended models for Markov chains which are called hidden Markov models. A classic example of a hidden Markov model is shown here. In this model, we have three different nodes, represented in circles. The arrow marks from one node to another node are called transitions or edges. In this example, it is a hidden Markov model to describe the weather of a particular day. We see that there are different transitions between sunny weather to cloudy to raining. For example, a transition from sunny to being cloudy is 0.15 meaning that if a particular day is sunny the probability that the next day will be cloudy is 15%. The hidden Markov models are applied in different biological sequence analysis. For example, hidden Markov models have been used for predicting genes. If we have a new sequence, and we want to identify the genes inside that sequence, we can use hidden Markov models to annotate the regions first, and then identify the location of a gene. Hidden Markov models can provide very good genetic models for performing different dynamic alignment algorithms for pairwise as well as multiple sequence alignment. We can also use hidden Markov models for building a profile for a sequence family, base calling, determining DNA sequencing errors, prediction of the secondary structure of protein, identifying copy number variations and many more. In other words, hidden Markov models are very important mathematical models that have been applied in various biological sequence analysis. Here, we are going to look at a very simple example of how we can use Markov chain to model the CPG islands. In the genome, the frequency of CG dinucleotide occurs in low frequency. For example, in the human genome the GC content is about 42%. So, we should observe G and C with probability of 21% in frequency for each of them. If we consider this as the expected frequency of the bases G and C, then the expected frequency that we should observe the CG dinucleotide is about 4.41%. But in reality, we observed only about 1%. What is the reason that we see this type of lower frequency of CG dinucleotide? 
This is because naturally cytosine is chemically methylated to methylcytosine, and methylcytosine is easily deaminated and converted into thymine. The C to T conversion is very naturally occurring in the DNA. As a result, the observed frequency of CG is much lower than the expected frequency. The methylated CPG residues are often associated with gene regulation at the promoter and exon regions. However, it is very interesting to note that there are some regions where this methylation process is suppressed, particularly in specific regions near the promoter or the transcriptional start site of many genes. These regions where methylation process is suppressed are called CPG islands. In the CPG islands, the GC dinucleotide appears relatively more frequent compared to the rest of the genome. So, identifying the CPG island can be very useful in identifying different genes. Here is the problem. Given a short stretch of genomic sequence, can we decide whether this stretch of genomic sequence come from a CPG island or not? To solve this problem, we need a model that generates sequences in which the probability of a symbol depends on the previous symbol. Here is a graph structured model and the Markov chain model for the DNA. The graph shows four different nodes, A, T, G, and C. Within these nodes there are certain transitions which denotes the probability of a particular nucleotide following another particular nucleotide. By calculating the transition probability of each node from known CPG sequence versus non-CPG sequence from the dataset, we can construct the table of transition probabilities as shown here. For example, in the PLUS or CPG island dataset, the transition probability from A to A is 0.18, A to C is 0.274 and so forth. It is interesting to note that, the probability of CG is higher in the CPG model versus the non-CPG model. This is expected as the frequency of observing the CG dinucleotides in CPG island is much higher. Once we have obtained these models for discrimination, these can be used to compute the log odds ratio by calculating the log of the ratio of the probabilities for the plus model and the minus model. In the table here, we show the beta values which are represented as bits. We can also plot the data where the x-axis represents the bits, and we can see two different areas. The sequences the dark gray represent the CPG islands, whereas the lighter gray areas correspond to the other regions. Thus, we can use two different Markov chain models to identify whether a particular sequence came from CPG island or not.